So let's start by navigating to projectsbb.com. And then we'll go to tutorials. And then we're going to click on how to use PWM. So here is the tutorial we'll be pretty much following along here. So today we will discuss pulsed width modulation, which is a pretty good way to control the voltage that goes into your device. So let's go ahead and get started. To begin, open up a terminal window if you're on uh, Ubuntu or, or an eDebian system running Linux, and then plug in your BeagleBone. I've already gone ahead and plugged in my BeagleBone. As you can see, if I go to my networking right here, you'll see the BeagleBone is connected right there. So then, by default, the IP address will be as follows. So let's SSH into it. So there you go. The IP address is 192.168.7.2. So let's connect. Okay, so once here, clear the screen so we have a good view of what's going on. I'll expand this just a little bit. Okay, so... To begin, let's be root user. And even then you might you might still need to uh use it. Yeah, you see, so now we're root user there, but we may still need to be use that sh dash c to get this to work properly. So now that we're logged in as root, we can go ahead and follow the steps. So let's start by activating the clocks to the I believe it's the clocks, but let's activate them to the pulsed width modulation system here. So let's navigate to the directory. So we'll cd sys class devices. Oops, sys. That's not class, that's for GPIOs. Okay, sys devices. And you'll see that we have bone cape manager. So we'll navigate to there. And we'll list that directory. So as you can see, you have a little section here called slots. What you're going to use that for is to echo this right here, which is basically the system you want to activate. It just sets the pin mux for you, which is why you need to be on kernel 3.8. Okay, so let's echo am33xx underscore pwm and we're going to echo that to slots so there you go now if we cat slots you'll see that it's right there now the next step is to choose the pin that you're going to use so if we go to the website here you'll notice that we have an abundance of pins to use i believe these are all the ones you can use not all of them are available though but um just for this example we're going to use pin 14 on the P9 header. So this is the command we would type. So we're going to echo bone underscore PWM underscore P9 which is the header and then uh, underscore and we're going to choose pin 14 on the P9 header and we're going to echo that to slots. The P has to be capital and there you go now we cat slots you'll see that it's right here now what are we gonna do with that so as you follow the steps you'll see that now all you have to do is navigate to this directory right here so let's step back one directory first so now we're in sys devices and you'll see that you you have this uh, OCP folder and I believe this number changes, so don't be uh, faithful on 3. If you're not sure what number it is or you're putting it into a program, you can always CD uh, and then sys devices and then OCP dot asterisk, which is the wildcard in case you don't know, and it'll put it there for you. So there you go. Now we're there and you'll notice that you now have pwm underscore test p9 underscore 14 that number after dot 14 may change so let's navig navigate to that directory and list it 
and there we are we are now in this folder where we can manipulate the pin be careful with what you have connected because if right when you start the pin almost immediately it sets it to run so if we actually cat this right now mm, yeah let me cat this cat run you'll see that it's actively running so let's turn that off for now and you you control these functions by echoing information into them have you list it I mean a cat you'll now see that it's stopped and if we test it out it's actually stopped as well so before we switch over to the camera let me discuss some of the files that are in here so you have something called a, a duty the period polarity and run these are the main ones you're going to be concerned with is duty period and run now in case you don't know what PWM does it basically controls the voltage so the beagle bone has a voltage of from 0 to 3.3 but that's not really what matters because if you want to up the voltage you can always use a transistor so let's go ahead and get started so duty is pretty much the okay let's start with period so if we cap period by default it's going to be 500,000 nanoseconds okay anyways so what you're gonna do now is cat duty and you'll see that it's at zero which means um, it's pretty much gonna rail almost immediately so it's gonna be 50,000 so this really doesn't make sense because it's just a voltage source and if we test it with the multimeter you'll see that we have 3.3 .3. but if we want pretty much a 50 percent duty cycle we'll just get half of this so five half of 500,000 is 250,000 so we'll echo 250,000 and we echo that to uh, duty now if we cat duty you'll see that it is now set to 250,000 which is half of this so right off the bat your voltage will be half so if you were at 3.3, .3, you're going to be at 1.666666, something like that. So yeah, if we do 3.3 .3 and take half of that, 1.65. So that's simple enough. Now let's flip over to the camera and test this out live. So now on the hardware side, I've built a circuit to amplify the Beagle Bones PWM signal. So let's say our signal looks like this, right? It has pulses and it goes on forever. This 3.3 .3 volt signal is going to be amplified through 12, to 12 volts through this transistor right here. So this is the Beagle Bone input. We have a 1 kilo ohm resistor to limit the current, which it's going to be acting as a switch, so we don't really need to adjust do too much adjustments just to make it work so we're using it as a switch so we have the one kilo ohm resistor from the beagle bone and the NPN transistor so that um, I believe the collector is I forgot already but anyways we're gonna hook it up to ground here and then this is the integrated system here on the LED strip so this is the LED strip and there's 12 volts and I have a power supply coming in right here that is 12 volts. So we got to hook up the common grounds to the beagle bone as well onto here. So all the common grounds are going to be together and I'll show you that right now. Then the 12 volt LED strip connects to the positive of the 12 volt power supply and the negative of the transistor and I have three circuits because this is a red green and blue LED strip so we're gonna kinda of arrange the colors with three pulse width modulation signals so these green wires right here are what's going to go to the P9 header on the pulse width modulation pins so we're gonna put the beagle bone right here and we're gonna hook up a common ground first so these are the NPN transistors they're the little ones these LEDs actually draw, I have it right here, the LEDs draw this much current. So they, on about each one of them draws about 20 milliamps. Altogether, they draw almost uh, 55 
if I'm just rounding to the nearest whole number, I guess, ish, 54. Anyways, they're milliamps, so it's very, very little. These can source, I believe, up to like, I don't know, five, I think it was 500 milliamps, which is kind of high, by the way, but, I mean, it, it, they're, this is way below that, so we're good. So, the basic thing that this circuit's going to do is amplify a 3.3 volt signal to 12 volts. That's all the only reason we're doing it, because this is a 12 volt LED strip. So let's start connecting the BeagleBone. Let's come up here to the computer and connect to the BeagleBone. So let's SSH into it. Okay. Now that we're logged in, let's go ahead and navigate and let's just get the pins going. Okay, so it's AM33XX underscore PWM, and we're going to echo that to slots. And we got our permission denied, so we're going to have to drop into a root shell. Okay, so now we're going to use three pin numbers. And I chose... Uh, three specific ones because when I chose, in my experience when I was working on it, when I chose pins that were too close to each other on the header, they were affecting each other. So I ended up choosing pin 16, 21, and 42 all on the P9 header. So we're going to echo bone underscore PWM underscore P9 underscore and the three pins we selected. So it's going to be pin 16. And then pin 21, and then pin 42. Okay, so now we'll navigate to those directories. And we're here already. So let's navigate to the first PWM, which is going to be 16. Okay. So now I'm going to open up two more terminal windows so that we can manipulate each one of them through the terminal window. So there we are. Now we'll clear each one and list what's in there. So for this first one, if we cat the run, but we need to have permission to cat, you'll see that it's already running. We're going to go ahead and stop the we're going to stop it from running so we're going to we're back all right so now we're going to echo a zero to run okay and i'm going to copy this command okay so now they're all stopped now on the hardware side let's go ahead and connect the beagle bone now so right here we first one we chose with a p9 header pin 16 then the second one we chose was 21 and then the last one we had chosen was 42 okay I believe everything's right now so this one was 16 okay so right there we are all connected let me make sure the LEDs are definitely in view. So we're done with that image there. So we'll zoom in here. So if I show you the beagle bone really quick, you'll see that we have the three wires connected there, each one in their corresponding pins on the P9 header. And down here, they're hooked up to the transistors. And the LEDs are right there. So we'll back out a little bit. 
and we'll start doing everything from the command prompt so you guys can see what's going on. But before we do that, we are forgetting one thing which sometimes can cause us to break our heads. Um, this is very strange actually. It's not supposed to be doing that. Okay, yes, that's right. Again, I'm already breaking my head. We haven't even started. So as you can see, it's already acting strange. And the reason why it's acting strange is because we haven't grounded the beagle bone to it. So we need to ground the beagle bone. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Now the ground pin on the beagle bone is usually pin 1 and 2. So you can choose one or the other. And I'm going to choose pin 1. So we've chosen pin 1 and we have grounded now. Now as you can tell they turned off. Which is exactly what we want. I'm going to zoom in a little closer so you guys can see the lights. Okay, now let's go back up here. And now we're going to check the, uh, the duty. And we're going to make it 50% to start. So as, as you remember, the default's to 500,000. So we're going to do 250,000. So we'll do 250,000. And we'll put that on duty. Okay. So we're going to run this one now. So sudo. Well, I already have a command typed out. We might as well. So we'll make it a 1. Okay. Now we'll check what happened here. For some reason it didn't run. Let me make sure we're on the... Oh, okay. For some reason it... Oh, okay. It's loose over here. We had a loose connection. Okay. So as you can see, it's on. Now, if we're going we're gonna to go slowly incrementing the power level. Let's see. Okay, you can see there. We're going to slowly go incrementing the power level here. So the duty, we're going to bring it up to, the higher we go, I believe, the smaller, let me see. So we're going to go down to zero nanoseconds. So that should be the full, uh, the full brightness. Now we're going to go up to almost nothing. We're going to turn it down to 499,999, which is almost 500,000. So that is on very low right there. So then we'll do 400 now. You see, turn on dim. So we can adjust them now. So we can do the same thing over here. So we'll run all of them now. There you go, they're all on. So now we're going to turn the brightness down on each and every one of them. Duty. We're going to make it 250,000. That's a very cool color right there, actually. I might use that for my channel here. I should probably remember those numbers. Eh, I'll get to them again. Oh, it's recording anyways. Okay, so that's a very dim with more uh Okay, so that one's on the first one. There's more green on that one than the rest of them. So let's turn the green down evenly. So right there that's supposed to be a cool white because they're all on evenly right there. Now let's say we wanted more the second one was red. Let's say we wanted more red. Then we would just turn the duty cycle here down to zero. That's all, That's full brightness of red. Very inefficient, by the way. What you want to do is more like 100,000. That'll change the color a little, and but you'll save a lot more power that way. These numbers right here, in case you missed it in the video, are nanoseconds. So the higher the duty cycle... Um, the lower the brightness is going to be. Well, in this program, this uh, setup they have. So, by default, it usually defaults to 500,000 nanoseconds. That's the full period. And as you go increasing the, the duty file, uh, it's in the file tree here, 
you go reducing the brightness of the LED because you're reducing the voltage. You're, you're basically setting the duty, the time it's off rather than on right there. So that's using the pulsed width modulation system on the beagle bone here. I'll have a downloadable copy of the circuit and if you have access to multi-sim I'll probably release the multi-sim simulation here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit, Don't forget to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. So hopefully with this new knowledge you guys have of PWM you guys can go make some cool projects yourself and post your results here on the comment section or go to www.projectsbb.com and post your projects there. I would greatly appreciate it. All right, well, I'll see you guys in the next video, and hopefully we'll be doing some pretty cool projects already since we got a lot of tutorials under our belt here. All right, see you guys in the next one.